acting as the Master of Ceremonies for today's career recruit graduation. On behalf of State Fire Marshal Peter Ostrowski and the men and women of the Department of Fire Services, we welcome you to the commencement exercises of Class S30. They have successfully completed the Massachusetts Firefighting Academy's career recruit training program. You can see many of our graduating classes are memorialized on the quilt you can see hanging above the center aisle right up there. One of our instructor's wives knitted that quilt from actual shirts the recruits make up in memory of each class. At this time, I ask you to please join me in welcoming our presiding officer for today's ceremony, State Fire Marshal Peter Ostrowski. He is accompanied by the official party. Please join me as we now welcome the Chiefs of Department for today's graduating recruits. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the entrance of the graduating class S30 and the posting of the colors. The graduating class will be led in by bagpiper Brian Sterling. Mr. Sterling is a retired captain of the Amherst Fire Department and works here in the support staff. Please remain standing for the playing of our national anthem.
Please remain standing for the invocation delivered by the Chief of the Massachusetts Corps of Fire Chaplains, Bruce Arbor. Let us be in an attitude of prayer. Upon this day, we ask your blessing and hear our thanksgiving for this very event for which we have gathered. Through the hard work of these recruits, through the dedication of their instructors and all of the academy to support them in this journey to this very day, equipping them to answer the call of distress of those in their community and to uphold this community as a safe place for all. We ask your blessing upon this celebration as we lift up all the recruits, their families and their friends in this opportunity to celebrate their accomplishment. And may we forever be in mind of those who continue to serve in our community and beyond. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I'd like to take the time to introduce you to the members of our official party here today. First, we have our state fire marshal, Peter Ostrowski. Representing the Massachusetts Fire Training Council, Chief Nelson of the Amherst Fire Department. You've met our chaplain for today, Bruce Arbor of the Mass Corps Fire Chaplains. And I'm proud to introduce our new director of the Massachusetts Fire Academy, Jeffrey Wynn. We also have the coordinator for the recruit program, Dennis Ball. And a recruit program assistant coordinator, Robert Escott. Also in attendance today are many of our instructors and support staff. Many are here on their day off because of the pride we all have in these graduating recruits. Some of you may not know this, but in addition to ensuring the recruits receive the best training possible, they are all either active or retired firefighters here in the Commonwealth. We thank all of you for your continued dedication. (laughs) 
We also need to note this program could not function without the administrative assistance of Christine Dancerou, who is not with us here today, Vicki Jagir, I don't believe she came out, uh, Christina Mitchell, right out in front here, and Carrie Marcott, if she's here as well. Thank you for all of your assistance. It is now my honor to introduce our State Fire Marshal, Peter Ostrowski. Good morning, everyone. It's my great honor and privilege to welcome you here to our Springfield campus on behalf of the men and women of the Department of Fire Services. Uh, we're so honored to be with you as we celebrate the achievements of Class S30. So welcome. I uh, want to lead off with a, a couple of thank yous as well. Uh, thank you to family and friends who are joining us here today and who have supported these recruits and these fire departments. Um, you know, we know when we sign on to the fire department, we're signing on to a second family. We spend a lot of time together, we uh, experience a lot of things together, and we work hard together. But we know too that it's critically important to have a support network, a support network that we find in our brother and sister firefighters, but certainly a support network that we enjoy at home. So we thank you for that support. We thank you for your efforts to get these recruits to where they are today. And we know too that uh, you've made sacrifices and will continue to make sacrifices as they go through their career in public safety. So. Welcome to your second family and thank you for your great effort and support. Thank you to these chiefs of department and the brother and sister firefighters that are here in uniform and in civilian clothes in support of their recruits. Again, we know that working together is critically important and that as we go through the process of joining and working through our careers, we get the opportunity to work closely with each other and support each other so well. And that's truly on display uh, here again today with the uh, welcoming back to their home departments uh, that's, that's gonna take place uh, as we move forward with this ceremony and this celebration. Thank you chiefs for your commitment to training uh, and you are entrusting your recruits to us. It's greatly appreciated. We take that responsibility seriously and uh, we uh, hope that we've uh, met your expectations as we march forward. And I wanna say a special thank you to our staff. I know uh, Mr. Escott and Mr. Jerusik uh, take great pride and we take great pride in the efforts of these instructors and those that they represent who are in the field today, training all over the Commonwealth, and who are true professionals. They are firefighters, uh, active and retired, who want to give back to the industry and who do uh, bring their knowledge, skills, and abilities because of their commitment to the service and their willingness to share their experiences and knowledge as we bring uh, each other along in this process. So I think uh, I would like to recognize those instructors and support staff, especially for their great efforts every day, but especially as we celebrate this class. Uh, one last quick thank you, and that's to uh, Jeff Wynn uh, for joining our team, but also for coming back uh, on the second week. We're very excited about that, Jeff. Um, Jeff is, is uh, drinking from a fire hose as far as his uh, uh, understanding of the academy uh, on a, on a day-to-day -day basis. And uh, we're really excited about um, moving forward. And uh, you know, to you and to, to Dennis, uh, thank you for your leadership in this program. We have a great team and they're doing an awesome job. So uh, welcome again, Jeff. Uh, this is uh, his second graduation ceremony um, this week. Uh, we graduated a class in Stowe earlier this week, um, and we have one coming up in Bridgewater. Uh, I think maybe Bridgewater will just have uh, Jeff handle everything. <laughs> By week three, you should be good to go. <laughs> to uh, class S30, I want to extend our heartfelt congratulations. I want to uh, take the opportunity to thank you for your effort 
and your work here uh, to accomplish this. It's notable that your commitment to your community is really on display in the, in the vocation that you've chosen and then you're moving forward in your careers. I also want to take the opportunity to remind you of a couple things. First and foremost, I think, is to be thankful. Be thankful for these family and friends, these brother and sister firefighters, all those that have got you to this point. Remember that, you know, throughout your time here, uh, you've come to understand and recognize that we all have strengths and weaknesses. And when we go out there, we go out together and we work hard to restore normalcy to somebody's worst day, a day with chaos. And we have to bring our strengths to the table to support others' weaknesses. Uh, but we also recognize that our weaknesses are backed up by those who come with us. And that we really have to expand those horizons and continue to work hard every day as we go through this career. In your graduation ceremony, what we see is the traditions of the fire service. Uh, Mr. Sterling brought us in with bags and pipe, uh, with uh, bagpipes. We recognize the traditions uh, through the uh, support and strength of the chaplaincy and the support of our Mass Corps fire chaplains and our local fire chaplains. We recognize the challenges that the fire service faces every day. The challenges of known hazards and issues and the challenges of those things coming over the horizon. We recognize the commitment, the commitment that you show to your family and friends, to your communities and to each other through your service in the fire service. And today we celebrate. We celebrate your accomplishment. Recall, I know you don't have trouble recalling that just a short time ago, you walked in the door here not knowing what to expect maybe not knowing anybody in your class. Maybe this is your first day in the fire service, was your first day at the academy, and recognizing that over these 10 weeks that you've mastered those basics, that you've come together as a team, and that you leave here not as a recruit, but as a firefighter. Carry that title proudly, you've earned it. But remember too, that you recognize all of us, when you're out on the street, whether you're in civilian clothes, bunker gear or uniform, people know who you are, you stand out and you represent every one of us. Do so proudly, but do so well. Carry that title as you go forward and build on the foundation that you've received here. Make sure every day is a training day because it's our responsibility to be prepared for what we face. Congratulations, well done. I would like to introduce Chief Nelson representing the Massachusetts Fire Training Council. He is here to present the Richard N. Baines Outstanding Recruit Award. <laughs> okay. Cool. Just that, ah, forget it. Uh, morning. Morning. Uh, I'm forged, forged, fortunate enough to present this, this award, but I'm also also get get the chance to say what I say each each time time I'm here. First class at S S third thirty. Congratulations. Uh, secondly, uh, welcome, welcome to the fam family. And third, and I think most important is welcome to what is absolutely the best job in the world. Richard N. Banks was the chair chairman of the Massachusetts Fire Tra Training Council for many years. Upon his retirement, the council voted to name the Outstanding Student Award in his honor. The career recruit, yeah, career recruit training curriculum is designed to train and evaluate students in the basic skills of the firefighting profession. 
This program is demand, demanding both academically and physically. Completing this pro program is an accomplishment wor worthy of recognition. In each class, there is one student who's at, who has excelled in, in the tra training pro program, and this student is named the outstanding student of the class. This award is based upon the student's total academic score, successful achievement in both academic and practical skills, skills testing, and evaluations. At this time, I would like, like to invite Chief Fursky of the Nick Fire Department fire, 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 to join, join us on, on stage. I am pleased to present the Richard N. Banks Award to the Outstanding Student of Recruit Class S30. This award was earned by firefighter Anna Carson of the Native. <laughs> You'd like to come on up here and say a few words? All right. Um, I just want to say thank you to all of you for being here. We wouldn't have been able to do these 10 weeks without like the support of our friends and family. Um, I want to thank the instructors. It's been an honor to learn from you guys. Um, you're passionate about what you do, and it's been a great experience for us here. And then to class 30, um, we came together as a group really fast. I'm glad to have met all of you. Um, and I'm excited to see what our careers hold for us. So thank you. At this time, I'm gonna call up Assistant Coordinator Escott for a call of the roll. So just one more recognition out here. Uh, I'd like to recognize any veterans in the room. If you please stand up and give you a round of applause. Thank you for your service. So now we're gonna call the roll and uh, family and friends Please feel free to come up to the center and take pictures uh, while your uh, firefighter is getting their certificate. Uh, Co-presenters, if you would come over to the side when we call you up and uh, come up on the stage as well, get your picture taken. And uh, one thing I'd like to point out, <clears throat> excuse me, as the recruits come up and get their certificates and they step off the stage as firefighters in their department, they're going to stop at this board over here and they're going to hang a number up on that board. The significance of that to family and friends that may not know is accountability. Wherever the recruits go out here in the drill yard, they're accounted for by that number. When they get to a station that they're going to work at for a period of time, they hang their number on a board. We know who's there. And if somebody's missing, we know where they're supposed to be. Same as when they get back to their departments. Many departments have different ways of doing this accountability, but everybody has a way of knowing where their firefighters are at any moment. So that's what they'll be doing when they step off the stage, hang their number up and continue off. Thank you. The Agawam Fire Department, Chief Alan Saroy. Co-presenting will be Lieutenant Jordan Malta, also the Agawam Fire Department. Graduating firefighter, Gabrielle Babowitz. <laughs> the 
Amherst Fire Department, Chief Walter Tim Nesslin. Yeah, it's on the paper, Chief. <laughs> Graduating firefighter, Madeline Burke. Co-presenting be the father, the retired Assistant Superintendent of Corrections, Albany County in New York, Steve Getzowitz. <laughs> Graduating firefighter, Patrick Getzowitz. Graduating firefighter Stone Corey. Town Fire Department, Chief John Ingram. <laughs> Co-presenting will be the brother, Firefighter Brian Bengal, and graduating Firefighter Danielle Fire. Presenter, firefighter, paramedic Kevin G.R. Belcher Town Fire Department. Graduating firefighter Abigail Kasprowitz. the Chelsea Fire Department, Deputy Chief Edward McGarry. <laughs> Graduating firefighter, Walter Ramirez. The Chicopee Fire Department, Deputy Chief Daniel Dupree. <laughs> Graduating firefighter Edwin Diaz.
graduating firefighter, Robert Doyle. graduating firefighter, Eric Garcia. of the Dudley Fire Department, and Chief, I'll apologize ahead of time, Dean Kochanowski. <laughs> Co-presenter will be the brother, Firefighter Joseph Flood of the Worcester Fire Department. <laughs> Graduating Firefighter Michael Flood. The Holyoke Fire Department, Chief John Kalegwich. <laughs> Co-presenting will be the brother, Firefighter Justin Sanchez of Holyoke Fire. <laughs> Graduating Firefighter Jason Sanchez. The Ludlow Fire Department, Chief Ryan Peace. <laughs> Graduating firefighter, John Luke Lavoy. The Natick Fire Department, Chief Jason Fursky. <laughs> Graduating firefighter, Anna Carson. The North Adams Fire Department, Chief Brent Lafitte. <laughs> Graduating firefighter, Jared Blondin.
the Northampton Fire Department, Chief John Devon. <laughs> Graduating firefighter, Lee Elder. Presenting to be the father, retired firefighter Brian Keefe Sr., Agawam Fire. <laughs> Graduating firefighter Brian Keefe. The Northbridge Fire Department, Chief David White. <laughs> Co-presenting Deputy Chief Tony Jenga, the Northbridge Fire Department. <laughs> Graduating firefighter Thomas Nardelli. Pittsfield Fire Department, Chief Thomas Sammons. <laughs> Graduating firefighter, Matthew Connor. Firefighter Casey Gifford. <laughs> Graduating firefighter Nicholas Levesque. Graduating firefighter Kyle Lucier. Graduating firefighter, Brandon Carr.
the Southbridge Fire Department, Chief Paul Normandon. <laughs> Graduating firefighter, Patrick Normandon. the Turner's Falls Fire Department, Chief Todd Grinnell. Co-presenting will be the father, retired detective, William Doyle IV. Graduating firefighter, William Doyle V. the Westfield Fire Department, Chief Patrick Egloff. <laughs> Graduating firefighter, Timothy Gavriloff. Presenting be the father, Captain Stephen Rubner, Southampton Fire. <laughs> Graduating firefighter, Erica Rubner. the Westminster Fire Department, Chief Kyle Butterfield. <laughs> Co-presenting, Lieutenant Bennett Shaborn, Westminster Fire. <laughs> Graduating firefighter, Zachary Razacourt. S30, great job. I had to wait for him to make it back around the uh, firehouse. I also would like to let everybody know this is the largest class that's graduated from the Springfield campus of the Fire Academy. 
They did a great job. At this time, I would like to call upon Class S30 spokesperson, Firefighter Zachary Rasicott of the Westminster Fire Department. Morning. <laughs> All right, first off, Big Al, you got any questions before I get this going? <laughs> if you were with us for the last 10 weeks, you know exactly why I needed to address that immediately. He'd stop me mid-speech to ask me about some restaurant in Philly or something like that. Uh, I'd like to start off by thanking retired captain from the Amherst Fire Department, Brown Sterling, for leading S30 in this morning. Special thanks to uh, Mr. Jeruzic for providing that wonderful recording, of the national anthem. We were going to sing it as a class, but uh, we practiced one time, sounded like a third grade choir practice. <laughs> so I could confidently say we made the right choice. I'd also like to thank all the chiefs, officers, families, friends of every recruit here for your continuous support throughout this process. Without it, none of this would have been possible. So for that, I thank you guys. All right. Ten weeks. Ten weeks of early mornings, lectures, long days in the drill yard, ten long weeks of these recruits asking me, do we need packs today? Just for the answer to be yes, 99% of the time. Most importantly, ten weeks of uh, Mr. Schutze developing these peak performance recruits you see in front of you today with uh, all his PT habits. Mm. Which reminds me, we'll be uh, potentially doing one last tower run out here. So if you guys are interested in that, just find one of us. We'll get you squared away. <laughs> I uh, recommend earplugs. It's like the Thunderdome out there. <laughs> but uh, on a serious note, these ten, uh, last 10 weeks have been the best 10 weeks that these instructors have ever experienced. <laughs> so, <laughs> 10 weeks sounds like a long time when you say it, but in reality, it's less than 1% of a 32-year career. 10 weeks of our life for the best job in the world, and I can confidently say that there's not one recruit here that would trade it for the world. I'd give anything to work with any one of my classmates. Might have taken 10 weeks for me to feel that way, but uh, <laughs> win's a win. So. We showed up every single day, gave it 110%. Even if we felt like jello from the 376 squats, 219 push-ups, six tower runs, 103 flutter kicks, and 4.25 miles we did the day before that. Super simple stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's a privilege to be, up, uh, be able to stand up here and present and represent class, class S30. But honestly, it could have been any one of my fellow classmates up here giving the speech right now. Wouldn't have been as funny, but. <laughs> At this time, I'd like to read a quote by uh, Lieutenant Ray McCormick of the FDNY. The education of a firefighter and the continued education of a firefighter is what make real firefighters. Continuous skill development is the core of progressive firefighting. We learn by doing and doing it again and again, both on the training ground and the fire ground. These instructors are some of the best instructors the MFA has to offer. I appreciate, we appreciate every single one of you and everything you've all done for us throughout our time here. You gave us everything you had to give, and now it's our turn to give you all that proud dad moment when we get out of here. So, S30, continue working, continue striving to be the best version of yourselves as I've watched you do for the last 10 weeks. The sky's the limit for each and every one of you. We've only scratched the surface, let's dig deep, get it done. This is officially the last call for lunch. <laughs> Thank you, guys. While walking these halls, you likely saw several class plaques hanging on the hallways. With the assistance of some of his classmates, S30 spokesperson will now present their class plaque to the representatives of our instructor cadre.
I'd like to ask you all to please stand for the benediction by Chaplain Arbor. As you receive these words this afternoon, receive them for the last time as members of the fire academy and for the first time as firefighters of the Commonwealth. You have sworn to do a duty that few others would be willing to take on, a duty to answer the call of distress when the alarm goes on, to use the dedication, the training, and the spirit and traditions that have been passed on to you by the instructors of this academy and by those whom you will serve side by side. Do so knowing you never go alone. And for the families and the friends that will continue to support you, be ever grateful, be ever mindful of their presence, and know that together you will serve this great commonwealth with pride and with safety. So go from this place, be safe, and serve in the proud tradition of fire service. This blessing upon each of you. And you all said, Amen. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's ceremony. On behalf of the State Fire Marshal Peter Sorowski and the men and women of the Department of Fire Services, I would like to thank you for joining us on this very special occasion. We wish each member of Class S30 the best in their future careers. I ask that you please remain standing for the departure of the official party followed by the fire chiefs.